Let's go to Neil, who's joining us from Nescopec, Pennsylvania. Neil, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Did I say it right? You did. Right on the nose. Oh, man. I got to tell you, that's very fun. Uh, How can I help today, Neil? So, Ken, I'm in a situation where... I'll give you the rundown as as briefly as I can. I work in a family-owned industry that uh, is almost what you could consider franchised. Um, I the work environment here is toxic, and I've been trying and unhappy trying to get out for what may be around two years. Um, the one thing that's keeping me here is someone in our management team had told me that you know you're the future. Uh, one day, you know, you can run this place possibly. Well, and while that was great hearing that, um, it wasn't coming from the person that needed to our ownership. Yeah. So long story short, I ended up, um, interviewing somewhere maybe around two years ago and my employer found out and basically all I wanted was them to invest in me, right. To, to make this official. Well, that started to happen, and because of this franchise, um, you can't just go out and buy it, and they want to make sure that they have the right people in place. So basically what happened is we sat down, and we started talking about the experiences that you know I would need. It was the franchise people. It was our management team, our ownership, and myself. And we established this plan, which would take around – um, two and a half years to complete until I had all the training necessary to, to move into the next role. The, the problem ha- comes where it's been almost a year and I haven't really completed any of it because the company traditionally runs on a skeleton shift where this guy covers for that guy and, and you know, long story short, a year later, I haven't got much done. So I've been looking recently and now using your resume i got uh, a phone interview and it went well um now i'm to the point where i'm almost nervous uh to potentially leave so my question is is, why are you nervous be specific uh, so i'm nervous well one reason is is one of the the terms or the sentences said to me was that you know, if you do run this place one day, you can make a lot of money or you could be uh, the highest seat in this place one day. That's that's my biggest what if. However, I also realized that uh, I could go through this and, you know, due to the lay of the land here, ownership is well past retirement. They don't need to, to work to make a living. They're here because they want to be here. If I don't get this completed in the time that, is necessary i could waste my time here and then lo and behold you know six months from now a year from now maybe ownership goes and sells the franchise rights to to somebody else and then i find myself um i'm losing all that time and effort uh for for really no reason where i could have been somewhere else learning and advancing um so really i'm uncomfortable uh with what may happen. So I'm kind of looking for advice as to do I sit down? Am I, am I complaining that uh, I'm not getting freed up to go do this training? No, do I take no, the next no, 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 look, no, 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 no. So, so let, let's, let me just ask one question and I'm going to tell you, cause you've given me all, in fact, I think you gave yourself the best advice. <laughs> I think you talked yourself into what I'm about to tell you anyway. So this will be great for you because you gave me A or B and uh, and I'm going to tell you my answer. But okay. I want to know, are you a family member? You're not, correct? No, no, I'm, no, I'm not. And they I'm have not. no family member that has raised their hand. They've got nobody that's a, a potential heir apparent that's in the family. There, there was two family members, one um, who uh, franchised, leadership doesn't believe has the knowledge skills or ability uh so that one's out and the other one actually used to work here but left as well because the environment is bad so that's how i ended up in this situation right so you started off the phone call telling me that the environment was toxic and in a toxic environment where it's a family-owned business where you're not a family member i got news for you outside of a miracle from the holy spirit himself it's not going to change 
All right. So right. that's bad mm-hmm. news. But here's the good news. The good news is you realize it, but there your brain keeps going, don't leave. What if you leave? What if you leave? And they all of a sudden get converted and decide they want to give it to you and you just kiss away millions. That's what your brain's telling you. Am I right? Right. I got news yeah. for you. They're not going to do it. So let me set you free. Uh, they told you this plan would happen. The plan hasn't happened. The plan hasn't happened for the same reason that it's a toxic environment. These might be very good people, but they are awful leaders. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, then. So you got no control over that. It's not going to change. They're almost reti- They're past retirement age. They couldn't change if I showed them how to change. That's my opinion. So. Right take the new opportunity or take or or if this isn't a great opportunity now i want to shift to the future this opportunity right now if it gets offered to you does it put you on the path towards fulfilling your purpose yes or no yes then take it and don't look back you hear me because yeah your very analysis is option b and i'm telling you to take option b because you're going to waste more time and more time and more time just hoping that they're going to have some miraculous thing happen and all of a sudden decide to do everything they told you they were going to do. I think that they're stringing you along like I would a puppy trying to train a puppy. You know what I mean? Just come here, buddy. You know, they're just playing games with you. I don't think it's insidious. I don't think they're evil people, but I just, they're just not healthy leaders. So it's time for you to leave, man. And uh, you will feel so free. Now, at first, your brain's going to try to go, boy, I hope that wasn't a mistake. So what your brain's going to tell you as you're walking out the door. Uh, but that's yeah. the voice of doubt, and that's a lie from the pit of hell, and you just need to ignore it because you need to focus on your future. So I really appreciate the call. Um, I want you to make sure you do not leave until you've got something to leave to. You understand what I'm saying? Sure, absolutely. All right, man. I really appreciate uh, the call, Neil, and your best days are ahead of you. Don't question that for a second. You go be you. You know, there is, uh, there's something to this, though, folks. I don't want us to skip over this. Don't skip over the fact that our brains are designed to protect us. So understand this is, this is neuroscience. This is nature. God put our brains in our head to help us with logic and making decisions and also to protect ourselves. However, the brain can play tricks on you. And when we start looking at new opportunities and leaving what we know, even though it's toxic, here's Neil. By the way, Neil's not an abnormal person. Neil's just like me and you. Neil's stuck in toxicity. He's waiting around in the sewer. That's essentially what he's saying. He has an opportunity to climb out of the sewer. He can see it. He knows if he climbs up there, he's out. And yet he goes, I don't know. I don't know if I should leave the sewer. And the backstory is something that Neil didn't mention, and I want to call this out. Yes, there's a part of him that goes, boy, what if they do change their mind and give me what they say they're going to give me, and then I make millions or whatever the situation is? That's part of it. The other part of it is he's going, I kind of know this environment. Yeah, it's the sewer, but kind of gotten used to the sewer. And folks, this is good old-fashioned fear of change. Something about our brain goes, all right, now look, I know you're thinking about change, but hold on. What are all the negative things that could happen that could hurt you? That's what our brain does. And, And again, receive that, but step into it and go, okay, brain, I'll go there. Could this happen? Let's play it out. Could this happen? Let's play it out. Could this happen? Let's play it out. And then we get to the point where we go, okay, thank you, brain. I got it. But that's what you got to do. You got to really take it head on or else you'll stay stuck in the pit because you're used to the pit. 